let's introduce ourselves. This is... Oh, I'm Roger. Uh, I'm an army brat, so I'm from all over, but I graduated from Maryland, blah, 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 from the north. Yeah. yeah. My name is Danny, and I'm from Seattle, Washington. My name is Tom. In the morning, I have a cup of coffee. After that, I go for a walk, because I'm from New Jersey. And I'm Ken. I'm from Boston. Woo! When I retire, I'm moving to Florida. Yes! And I am Jeanette, and I, um, I was born in uh, Baltimore, but I grew up in Pennsylvania. And we are Misplaced Northerners. Uh, uh, tonight, uh, we have a special guest. Danny is here, and he is going to uh, enrich our lives with stories that are going to then inspire our show. But first, to inspire Danny, we need a quick suggestion from you guys. So what is something, um, a time or a place or a, a person that's made you feel really accepted and loved? Oh, none of you have ever felt accepted oh. and loved. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. The 1940s. The 1940s. The 1940s. Made you feel, why? Why, sir, did that? <clears throat> Just felt so at home. What, what specifically made you feel at home? The smell of the apple grass and the uh, evergreen trees. <laughs> apple grass and evergreen trees. Got it. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. So when I was growing up uh, in the great state of Washington, which none of you clap for, but I'll let that go. <laughs> All the trees are evergreen, which is so beautiful, it's so nice, it's so scenic, and it's really a beautiful place mm -hmm. to have as a backdrop for your childhood. What is less beautiful is the rain that pours down on you, crushing your soul with each passing day. <laughs> so I moved there when I was four, and I left when I was 15 to come to Oklahoma because my parents make bad choices. So all I remember from the age of like super duper young to being like a preteen jerk was everything I did, there was rain in the background. My first Valentine's dance in middle school, it was raining. And my whole motif was wet. If you were alive in the 90s, French roll jeans don't look good if they've been wet. Uh, neither did my hyper-colored t-shirt or my backwards Seattle Supersonics hat when there were still Supersonics in Seattle. Pause for effect. Um, so that was my whole life. It was just a very drenchy, depressing thing, only emphasized by the introduction of grunge music which made all those previously depressed teens in Seattle super duper depressed. <laughs> Great, and when the lights come up, misplaced northerners. It's a sundial. And it is accurate two days out of the year. <laughs> I love the way you think. You know, I mean, I just kind of go with nature. You don't need mechanical devices to tell you what time it is you have. The sun. The sun. When it's not behind all the clouds. And the stars. When they're not behind all the clouds. <laughs> and our love. When they're not behind the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> Rain's everywhere. David, we can't get away from it. No. Well, I can think of one way. Drinking heavily. <laughs> I was going to impale myself on the sundial. <laughs> hey, it's two o'clock. <laughs> I'm telling you this because I love you. You have a very bad sunburn. It's, it's the only way I, I knew you'd... Pay attention to me and touch me. It's just to emphasize that I am severely, severely burnt. Touch you? I, I when I. Oh uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> it hurts you. Yeah, yeah. And you still want me to touch you? It's the only way that I know you're doing it. Oh my god. Oh yeah, you love me. <laughs> oh, we have a relationship. <laughs> yeah, we do, Roger. Well, I, I. Oh. I don't want to hurt you, but I love it when you scream. <laughs> oh. Oh, that sounds great. Here, what about right there? Oh, Kendra, I love it. Oh, how about here? Oh, I have hair, but it's still tender. <laughs> That's great. Oh, uh, can you touch me? Yes, please. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Ah! <laughs> ah, fuck you! <laughs> I want you to burn it out! Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is the best prom. <laughs> so I'm thinking a wet motif, you know, just like everything is drenched. Right, right, it's right. Completely looks, drenched. Looks slick and has a sheen Saturated. It's it. going to be the best prom theme ever. Mm. Uh, I mean, don't you, don't you think that? It, do you think the high schoolers are gonna like? Oh, I got your shipment of baby oil. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm just saying, uh, I, I think they might find it, you know, I think they might make jokes about it. I think the, uh, like, uh, the freshmen especially, if any freshmen get invited, I think they might make jokes about our theme being wet on prom night. <laughs> what I'm hearing you say is there's going to be an extra added bonus of laughter at prom. Got it. No, it's getting they, better. I think this is a little, like a little double entendre. They might find it a little suggestive. <laughs> oh, okay. So we need to not be suggestive, but explicit. All right, everyone must wear white. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, look, uh, it's the 90s. We can't do this type of stuff in schools anymore. <laughs> Great, then we'll hold it at that skeezy motel down on I-52. This isn't the 1940s. There are rules nowadays. <laughs> there are rules about how we interact with students. Okay, Russell. According to right. HR, he's right. <laughs> Russell, Russell, what, what I'm really hearing from you what I'm really hearing from you is you want to be the head chaperone. Yes. Great, dress just like that. We're gonna need another shipment of baby oil. I'm on it! <laughs> so Betty, I, uh, I hope you don't mind that uh, we're spending the night here in this uh, somewhat skeezy hotel. No. No, I don't mind at all, Brad. I think it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Oh, well, that's great. I'm gonna step over here and uh, get ready. Oh, oh, are there are there bathrooms here? <laughs>
What, it, when it finish? I mean, whew. that has never happened to me before. I mean, I'm very disappointed. I thought this was going to be an in and out thing, and then we've been here for three days. I am deplete of fluids. <laughs> My name's Frank. <laughs> Martin. You seem like a Martin. Yeah. And you seem like a Frank. It suits you because of your honesty. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I, I gotta tell you, I didn't have to be too honest. I was like, that's great, that's great. It just came right out. Hmm. Would you like a beverage, Martin? Yeah. Uh, Go ahead, Martin, help yourself to a beverage. <laughs> Frank, do you want a beverage? Yeah, I don't mind if I do. <laughs> Normally I wouldn't say anything, but I'm pretty honest. <laughs> I believe that, you know, if you're going to talk to anybody, you talk to yourself. You got to check in with you first. You got to you know yourself, right? You got to learn what you want. How do you learn what you want? You ask yourself questions. Right, I'll ask myself a question. Frank! Why do you drink and smoke so much? I don't know. I guess I was raised that way. Your turn. <laughs> Martin, why do you have sex with random strangers for three days on end? Because I'm lonely. Frank, why do you let strangers do weird things that you've only read about in legendary Kama Sutra books? I don't know, I guess because I'm an undercover police officer. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, yeah, you get your own chair. Fine. Right Let here, it. got a legendary Kama Sutra book. <laughs> I'm not going to let you read it. You know what the therapist said? I'm not sure I do, Janet. You have to share. It's <laughs> <laughs> being so withholding. It's our problem. Sharing. Sharing. I don't know. This is the kind of thing I'm used to looking at by myself. Have you ever thought that maybe I would like to look at it, Bobby? That means you want to look at it. <laughs> you want to look at this. Yeah, a oh, duh. Okay, Janet. Yeah. Be prepared. There's some powerful stuff in there. Oh, yeah. Done it. Ooh, invented it. <laughs> um, oh, oh, yeah. I think my great grandmother wrote about that in her diary. <laughs> Wait, when does it get to the powerful stuff? It's a female who's empowered by knowledge. Sexy as hell. <laughs> uh, yeah, I believe it's called uh, sapophilia. <laughs> I have sapophilia? <laughs> yes, uh, no, I'm so young. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually quite common. It's, it's somebody who is attracted to intelligence. Oh God, I like them dumb. Oh God. No, 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 that's it's not what our footage is saying, Carl. It's not what we're seeing. I have a bucket of sap here. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe your sap will kill. Oh no, 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 no. This is very unprofessional for a medical environment. I have a real condition. Hey. I am working. You know how hard it is to rub sap on yourself? This isn't baby oil. It looks, <laughs> it looks laborious, I'm just saying. I, just, I, I feel like you can explain to me what the ramifications of sapophilia are in, well, in real context. In real context, I'm just saying you should look for a partner who stimulates you intellectually rather than just physically. No, I'm not doing that at all. What else do you got, dude? <laughs> I am saying that, you know, you probably should look for people at maybe, I don't know, Barnes and Noble. <laughs> I don't think they're still in business. <laughs> Are they? Are, is that a thing? Okay, I can do that. Yeah, I, I can. I like reading. I read. I read Fahrenheit 451 in college. Oh, nice. The last thing I Bucket read. Bucket of fire. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gather around, fellow Mensa convention.
convention goers. Whoa, men so smart people! I just uh, <laughs> wanted to go over the itinerary for the morning. So we've got um, a back-to-back-to-back -back -back lecture from the foremost uh, theologian, the foremost um, astrological-ologian, and the uh, foremost sexological-ologian. Yeah, for some knowledge! Woo! You got science on science on science, double penetration! Woo! And, uh... Mensa! After lunch, I'm so glad you're just so, so excited here, Carl. It really, it brings... I'm finally on that chair! <laughs> it's good, Carl, it's good, Carl. All right, and after lunch, uh, Carl already knows the schedule, but I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. Um, there's a, a very fancy ladies shop down the way where we're going to all go and shop for lingerie. Yeah! Huh, what's lingerie? <laughs> You're in Mensa. You know everything. Well, I mean, we know the French derivatives of lingerie. Oh, lingerie. tell me about them. Meaning to relax and comfort. The verb. Conjugate! <laughs> How did he get in here? Whatever, okay. Lingerie. What? Yes. I'm just starting yeah. to, to, to question the validity of this Mensa meet. Woo, Mensa! More than one man! Mensa! <laughs> and he thinks Mensa is plural of men. Already went through the change! Woo! This is the lectures who mentioned our actual science. Astrologicalology? That's totally science. It's definitely science. Franklin, you're smart. You know the true purpose of this meeting, okay? You know the true purpose of this organization. It's to be more like Carl. It's to be cool. Woo! Coolness, Mensa! We're not, we're not cool. We have to become cool. We have to be like Carl. Wait, th th this is just what the outside world tells me. me Woo! Peer pressure! I can't be like-minded people. I don't. I don't know how to be cool, and I don't think I want to do it. My whole life they've been telling me to be like Carl. I like Star Trek. Get your nose out of that book. Be like Carl. My God, Franklin. My God, Point Dexter. Don't you get it? The world is not full of psychologists. They're not going to be attracted to us just because we're smart. We have to be dumb. They're going to be monologues. Don't take your D&D dice everywhere. Be like Carl. He's been drinking since 8 a.m. And pounding them like yeah. one after the other. <laughs> Time is a linear construct! <laughs> I mean, that depends Whoa. on who you believe. Gentlemen. I mean, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Sorry. Maybe if we Sorry. drink enough, we'll understand quantum physics. I'm dang. Yes, let's do that. G-string theory! <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. It's just, the evergreens depress me. They never change color, so I thought if I could genetically mutate them where they would change with the seasons, I would feel like time passes and wasn't just some sort of nonlinear construct. <laughs> <laughs> but Clarence, how does that really make you feel now that you've achieved it with one tree? Like a god! It, may, it makes me feel like I'm a god! And I am so sorry for it. Clarence? Lawrence? I have something to tell you. Lawrence, what do people tell me? I... Ooh. This is the genetic material of every tree in the state. Oh. So. I stole it from the University of Washington. What? From Eight. the tree DNA bank? Yes. <laughs> And I want you to change all of the evergreens to sometimes greens. Did somebody order a bucket of pollen? That would be me! <laughs> It's a little embarrassing how I went about changing the DNA. <laughs> I have to introduce my DNA. And there's 
only one way I know to go about introducing my DNA into tree DNA, and that is, of course, a centrifuge. Oh. <laughs> I really didn't want to hear those details, but no, tell me more. Look, first you have to balance the centrifuge. That pollen's not going to rub itself. Get in here. <laughs> turn it on. You walk away, and when I turn back, it will be a sentient tree with its own mind and opinions and feelings. So, like, I'll turn back and I don't know, like, three, two, one. Aha! It works. <laughs> <laughs>